This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. We're putting Gutenberg out of business, talking e-readers. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So last year, we decided to invest in e-readers, but we just couldn't figure out which one we wanted. Uh, We basically said the iPod or iPad is just still too expensive. You know, well, and we we were looking really for something justify. smaller. I yeah. wanted an actual reader to right. read books on. Mark was looking more for a tablet. Right. So we couldn't decide between the Amazon Kindle Fire and the Barnes and Noble Nook. So we ended up splitting. We got one of each. Yeah. We each used both of them for like about a week, and then I decided I liked the Nook better, and so Mark ended up with the Fire. Right. So let's compare the two. Uh, now again, this is based on about a year old, so I think both have been updated since then, but pretty much they're the same machines as they were before. They might just be a little snappier now. A little snappier, and Nook put on a proprietary cable. Right. Boo, Boo hiss. But both are actually Android-based with an added interface, so you don't really see the Android interface. Right, unless you want to root them. Unless you want to root them. So the Amazon Kindle Fire, and this is the first generation unit, and here it is. So, ooh, ooh. Uh, it has a decent screen. It has, I think, pretty good Wi-Fi. It's pretty easy to bring up, and it connects pretty quickly. It has a decent battery, you know, because, you know, this is there's a lot of room there for battery. Um, it's pretty reliable and fairly stable. I really don't have to reboot it or, or try to do much with it very often. Um, it does have, obviously, very good ties to Amazon. I mean, Amazon's selling it as a a loss leader because they want you to use their system and buy books and movies. And you're pretty tied movies. into Amazon then. Right, and that's the good and bad, really, is yeah. that you're tied to Amazon, great, but you're also tied to Amazon. You, you can't get into the Google Play Store. Right, and it is not really a true Google device, as you said. You can't connect to Google Play, so you can't get to a lot of the Google apps. Now, a lot of them are on the Amazon Store, but not all of them, and... And that becomes a hassle, especially for me, because I've also got a, uh, uh, a Galaxy Nexus. So as do I. You're right. Yeah. And so it'd be nice if they, if all the apps just were on both machines, and I wouldn't have to worry about it. Right. But so, have you ever read a book on yours? Uh, I can't say that I have. Okay. Yeah. In terms of actually e-reading, I mean, I've read magazines and things like that. Um, uh, in fact, I'll mention a magazine, and you can get this for a lot of interfaces. Wired magazine. Um, I like that they've made it electronic, but uh, it really has an inconsistent interface. Um, well, and, and purposely inconsistent, right, it seems like. Right, right. And you almost have to experiment to go, do I go, do I swipe this, this way, way or do I swipe this some way? Some of the articles you page and some of the articles you scroll, it is right. very weird. Yes, and you have to experiment every, every time. And we also get entertainment weekly this way, and that is a much more consistent more traditional interface, although they do extras, and it tells you what to do right. when there's extras. Wired, you pretty much have to, gee, I wonder if there's anything extra here. Yes. <laughs> and but, both of those magazines, we get print, and then they come automatically as an E edition. edition. Which, frankly, it'd be great if we could just get the E edition. <laughs> well, since I get them free... Right. Uh, eh, yeah, what are you going to do? Um, the browser is not great. The, the, the native browser, I highly recommend that you go and get the Dolphin browser. It's much more stable, and it does a lot more. The regular browser, I don't even think, supports Flash, and it's uh, not a good idea. But So what do I actually use it for? Well, I use it for Evernote. I take notes for the shows I'm doing here and notes for various things. I play games on it. Um, I use it mostly as a clock upstairs for uh, uh, beside the bed, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. So not using it as much as I really had expected to use it for. Do you think you would use uh, an iPad any more than that? Um, I might, um, especially that iPad mini. That seems interesting, the 7-inch. Or seven the inch. bigger Nexus tablet? Or the Nexus tablet. I think that is, you know, if I had to do it again, I probably would go with the Nexus tablet. Okay. The, the, the Nexus 7. Well, so. um... I have the Nook, and it has a lot of the same things that Mark's does, although it's tied into the Barnes & Noble store. Right. So every app costs money. 
we don't really get free apps, but it's relatively easy to root this if you were really interested in getting other apps. I use it mainly for an e-reader. There's a few things that I miss that I might get on a Kindle if I wanted to. Uh, we have Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. So the Kindle, you can actually check out books. You can borrow books right. instead of buying them. We, now, and that's one thing. If you're going to go ahead and get the Fire, go ahead and get Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, go ahead and spring for that. Right. But as an e-reader, I really prefer the Nook. And there's two reasons why, which seem kind of silly. Uh, but one of them is when I'm reading the book, it has an icon for my battery life and an icon for the time that show while I'm reading. And on the Kindle, it doesn't. And that kind of annoys me because I kind of want to know what time it is sometimes when I'm reading. And if I have my Nook, I can just tell if it's time for me to stop right. or or whatever, whatever without having to get up or exit my book. or right. Yeah. And really, I think that was the primary reason I picked the Nook over... But, I mean, in terms of actual readability, are they pretty much the same? They're pretty similar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is that the Nook has expanded memory slots. Right, which the Fire does not. Right. So I can store my own content, not the content I get from Barnes & Noble, because that you can only store in a certain section, which I think is kind of silly. Right. Um, so, for example, when I download my wires from the Barnes & Noble store, they go into this section, and I can only keep two of them on my... E e-reader at a time because yeah. well, and, they take up so much room. And the reason they do is because they put a bunch of like video content which they download along with the magazine. Which frankly I don't really need the video. I wish there was an option to say I don't want the video content. Right. Make them much smaller. Yeah. Um, but Barnes & Noble does give you a free book every Friday if you go to their website. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of good things about it. And you can store extra content on that memory card. So I can put 40 or 50 or more books on my memory card. Mm -hmm. So when I go on vacation, I won't have to do anything else and I won't have to access a wireless network to download it. Right, and I think in total, the Fire is much more of a tablet that also happens to be an e-reader and the Nook is more of an e-reader that also happens to be a tablet. I would agree with that. And, and they each play to their strengths. Yes. So you can check out the audio podcast, How I Got My Way Free Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.